Welcome back to the Close to Home podcast. Thank you so much for being here and listening. Super duper excited again to have the one, the only, Nikki Benson from Caliber Home Loans here with me today. Hi, Nikki. Hi. How thanks are for you? having me again. How are you? <laughs> I'm thrilled. I am tickled pink. You are ready to go. <laughs> and you are ready to talk about five helpful do's and don'ts for home buyers when they're applying for a mortgage. You got that right. Okay, great. I cannot wait. We are going to give them five and they are going to love it. Yes. Okay. Knock them alive with five. <laughs> Here we go. Here's our first helpful do and don't for home buyers when they're applying for a home mortgage. What is number one? Number one keep all of your paperwork when it comes to anything dealing with finances whether it's your employment contract pay stubs bank statements keep originals if you're depositing a check outside of your payroll keep a copy of the check you want to see from start to finish accurate accounting of your finances you need a paper trail paper trail it up baby okay cool <laughs> i love it and what should people not do what's the company don't don't be willy-nilly with your finances. Don't deposit cash from unaccounted sources. If you're depositing checks, don't just put it in there without keeping any paper trail of it. Don't accept funds from someone that you can't account for where it came from. You know, yeah. Something as a financial institution, we have a responsibility to prevent money laundering. So we're going to be going very deep into your finances to make sure we know where everything is from and where everything is going. Yeah, so don't accept that $800 from your cousin that wants to pay it to you in cash. Yes, we do not Great. want any large cash deposits where we can't account for where they're from. Okay, perfect, that's good to know. Yes. Okay, cool. What is our number two helpful do and don't for home buyers when applying for a mortgage? Number two, let's talk about earnest money. We want to make sure we know where it's from. So you would want to deposit your earnest money from a personal check or using a cashier's check from your personal account. Or if you're receiving gift funds, we want that to be from a qualified gift donor. So talk to your loan consultant before depositing your gift or your earnest money. Absolutely. And what should people not do? What you should not do is use unaccounted for funds for your earnest money. We don't want to have you putting in a cash deposit. Sometimes people get um, gifts from weddings mm -hmm. and they want to use that to buy a home. Don't just deposit cash and think you can use it for earnest money. For every penny used for purchasing your home, we want to know exactly where it came from. And if it's a gift, it has to be from a qualified donor. So don't do your own thing when it comes to money for purchasing your home. Absolutely. So how about this? I had a client recently who is married, but purchased a condo on his own and his wife was not on the contract, had not applied for the loan. But after we got into contract, he asked me, Brennan, can my wife deposit the earnest money? What would you tell him? What I would tell him is your wife can give you gift funds for your earnest money deposit. We would need to have a gift letter executed showing the relationship as husband and wife. That would be a qualified gift. We can use that. Could she deposit that on her own? Absolutely not. Could she give you a gift with a gift letter? Absolutely. Cool. Yep. So, and some that's something to talk about with your loan officer before you do that. Don't yes. ask the day that it needs to be done. If it can come from a different account, plan that out in advance because yes. the timelines go so quickly. You need to know that in advance and have that all ready. Over communicate. Do over communicate with your realtor and loan consultant. Don't do don't do things on your own. Exactly. <laughs> well said. Okay, what is our number three helpful do and don't for home buyers applying for a mortgage? Number three, we're gonna talk more about gift funds. Notify your loan consultant if you are going to receive gift funds. You might be planning on doing a purchase all on your own and then in the middle of the transaction or right before you put in an offer, your family member might be so gracious as to say, I want to help you out and give you a gift of $10,000, $5,000, whatever it is in your case. As soon as you are notified from your family member that they want to contribute, notify your loan consultant. Do let us know the moment you receive gift funds or that you're about to receive gift funds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what's the don't? 
don't go and deposit money and not have an explanation of where it came from. Absolutely. Have that gift letter executed. That's right. There are so many times that actually parents are so gracious and they see their you know, offspring buying a home and they're like, well, we want to help you. It happens. You know? You yeah. Yeah. And so it'll happen right in the middle of the transaction and you have to over communicate again mm -hmm. and just be uh, in touch with your loan officer about where that money is coming from. Cause it can't just appear out of thin air. That's right. We are not Harry Potter. Exactly. Another don't to go along with that is don't accept gift funds from someone who's not related to you. Mm. So you cannot receive gift funds from, your best friend they could be closest to you you can't receive gift funds from a girlfriend you can or a boyfriend for that matter you can receive gift funds from a fiance okay how about that for yeah. a helpful nugget yeah i like that nugget so you can receive it from an aunt cousin fiance mother brother you can't receive gift funds from tom dick and harry Okay. Or well, Harry. Good. good. Ah, Harry, ah, get out of here. Ah, ah. <laughs> Goodbye, Harry. You don't want your money. So, what is number four of the five helpful do's and don'ts for home buyers applying for a mortgage? Number four, let your loan consultant know if there are any employment changes. So, if you get a raise, notify your loan consultant. If you get transferred to a different office, notify your loan consultant. If you get fired, notify your loan consultant. <laughs> <laughs> if you make any changes, even if they're lateral, we need to know. Um, get everything in writing so that we can have it documented into your loan file. What if you're just changing positions at work, but you're still getting paid the same way? Notify your loan consultant. Absolutely. Okay. Over what communicate. If, what if um, I am moving from a salary to an hourly? Notify your loan consultant immediately. That okay. Could, that could and change if you qualify for your loan or not. Got it, absolutely. Okay, so what's the accompanying don't on this one? Don't change your job without notifying your loan consultant. <laughs> absolutely. Now, I think if it's dire and you have to change your job, that's okay, but mm -hmm. you should try to stay in the same. Yeah, so here place. is the advice as far as changing jobs. Um, you would want to if you're going to change, have it be a job where you're making more money. Have it be a full-time salary job where you're going to make the same amount, whether you work 30 hours or whether you work 55, your paycheck's going to stay the same. Have it be a job where you have a contract, where you have it in writing how much money you're going to make. So we can document that in the loan file and not change how much you qualify for. Absolutely. Love it. All right, Nikki, what is our fifth and final helpful do and don't for home buyers applying for a mortgage? This is the most important. We're saving the best to last. Keep everything the same or better from the time you apply for your pre-approval to the moment you get the brass key in your hand and we take a picture of your smiling face. Okay. And what do you mean by keep everything the same or better? You want to keep your employment the same or better, make more money, um, don't do less, keep the amount of money you have in your savings account or add more to it. As far as revolving credit uh, limits, you want to keep them the same or lower. Like keep your, if your credit card balance is $5,000, we do your pre-approval, have to be $5,000 or lower. Pay it down. Don't close any credit accounts because that can be detrimental to your credit score. Um, all of that you want to keep the same or better. Okay, what if I'm a home buyer and I'm in contract for my lovely new house and I go to Crate and Barrel and they tell me, Brennan, you can open this credit card with us and pay for everything you want for your new house with no interest for 12 months. Well, you have just identified the don't that accompanies that do. Do not get any additional credit cards. Don't get a new car. Do not do anything that would add more debt to your debt to income ratio, because that could bump you from qualifying to no longer qualifying for your home. Even if you, let's say we go through the entire purchase process, you've signed your paperwork, you were clear to close, we're good. And then you're at Crate and Barrel and you figure, hey, I've already signed my loan paperwork, I'm good to go. Your loan consultant will be monitoring 
your credit pulls up until the point that we give you a little brass key in your fingertips. We're monitoring it and we will see if you get any new credit cards, any new credit accounts, we'll see how much it's for and if there's an additional payment that goes along with it and we will add it to your debt to income ratio. So that has in the past, not with any of my clients because they're educated before they start buying, but that has bumped people from being qualified to disqualified or we have to then decline the loan even after you sign your closing paperwork. You could defunct yourself out of buying your house. Don't get any additional credit before you get a little brass key in your hand, open the door and, and walk inside. The cameras, Don't saying, let those crate and barrel employees con you into a credit card. Con you into disqualification. <laughs> That's what they're conning you into. Yeah, just kidding. But go shopping for your furniture after you purchase the house after and after the loan's the closed, the day after, when you're moving couple yes. days after it's closed. Just wait. Absolutely. So those are our five very helpful do's and don'ts to home buyers applying for a mortgage. Anything else you want to tell our home buyers as they're thinking about their journey? Just thank you for the opportunity to be of service. We This is what we live for. We love doing it. So ask us as many questions as you want. We're here to help and serve. Absolutely. And we will have Nikki Benson's contact information in the show notes. But Nikki, tell us where people can find you online. On Instagram, which is my favorite place, you can find me at Boss Lady Mortgage. Oh, <laughs> but minus the O car. No O car. <laughs> Just is Boss that... Lady Mortgage. No O car. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for being here today. Always a pleasure to see you and hang out with you. Love working with you. So thanks so much for coming in. It's my joy. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. High five it out. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, join us at our upcoming events. You can find a link to those online in the show notes. And uh, we can't wait for you to tune in to our next episode. See you soon. See ya. <laughs>